So let's continue our discussion on electric dipole moments and let's look at the following example. So hydrogen chloride given by the formula HCl has a dipole moment of about 3.4 times 10 to the negative 30 coulombs multiplied by meters. So assume that the distance between our two atoms within a single HCl molecule is about 1.2 times 10 to the negative 10 meters. So we have three parts to this problem. Let's begin with part A. Calculate the electric charge on each atom. So the overall charge on a single HCl molecule is zero, it's neutral. But because the chloride atom is more electronegative than the H atom, that means it will pull electrons closer. And so electrons will spend more time around the chloride atom than around the hydrogen atom. And that means this atom will develop a small negative charge and this atom will develop the same charge, but that charge will be positive. So to calculate what this charge is, what the quantity of charge is, we have to use the following equation. We know that the electric dipole moment P is equal to the product of the charge and the distance between those two charges. So we know what the distance is and we know what our electric dipole moment is. So let's use this equation and solve for Q. So our Q is equal to the ratio P to L where P is 3.4 times 10 to the negative 30 coulombs multiplied by meters divided by L which is this quantity 1.2 times 10 to the negative 10 meters. The meters cancel and we're left with electric charge of 2.8 times 10 to the negative 20 coulombs. So this is the quantity of charge that is found on the chloride atom and the quantity of charge that is found on the H atom. Now on the chloride atom, this is negative and on the H atom, this is positive. So if we find the net overall charge, we'll see that negative this plus positive this gives us an overall charge of zero. Now let's move on to part B. What would be the maximum torque this molecule would experience as a result of a constant electric field given to be this value? So 3 times 10 to the 4 newtons per coulomb. So we essentially have the following electric field that points to the left along our x-axis. And to calculate the maximum torque, we have to orient our molecule perpendicular with respect to our electric field as shown. So this angle is 90 degrees. So we have two torques acting on our two atoms. So torque number one is acting on our chloride atom and torque number two is acting on our H atom as shown in the following diagram. So to find the maximum torque, we simply sum these two torques up. Notice they point in the same exact direction. They point clockwise and let's choose clockwise to be positive. So T1 plus T2. Now the distance between these two atoms is given by L and we choose our axis of rotation to be right in the middle of that value. So that means the lever arm for both cases is L divided by 2. So torque 1 is equal to force 1 multiplied by the lever arm L divided by 2 and torque 2 is force 2 multiplied by L divided by 2. Now, because the two charges are exactly the same, that implies that force 1 is equal to force 2. Now, force 1 is simply the product of the charge multiplied by the electric field. So, force 1 is Q multiplied by E and force 2 is Q multiplied by E. So, we take the sum and we get that our maximum torque is equal to Q multiplied by E multiplied by L. Now we know Q is this quantity found in part A 
our E is given to be this quantity and the L is also given in the problem stem. So we multiply these values and we get about 1.01 .01 times 10 to the negative 25 newtons multiplied by meters is the maximum torque. So let's move on to part C. How much energy is required to rotate the molecule by 60 degrees from its equilibrium position. So what exactly is our molecule's equilibrium position when that molecule lies in our electric field, in which the magnitude of the electric field is still given to be this quantity. So our equilibrium position is the position in which our molecule does not move. And it's equal to the following position when our H atom lies here and our negative atom, our chloride atom, lies here. So that notice our uh, electric dipole moment vector points in the same direction as our electric field. It begins on the negative side and ends on the positive side. So this is our equilibrium position. Now when our molecule moves, when it rotates by an angle of 60 degrees with respect to our x-axis, with respect to our electric field, we want to calculate how much energy is required, how much work is required to rotate that. Now recall the work that is done by our electric field is equal to the product of P, the electric dipole moment E, our electric field, and the difference in the following two cosines. So cosine of angle theta 2 minus cosine of angle theta 1. Now angle 1 is simply our 0 degrees angle and angle 2 is simply our 60 degree angle. So that basically means we simply take the product of our P which is this quantity, E which is this quantity and then we find what this is and we plug that into our calculator and we get a value of 5.1 times 10 to the negative 26 joules. So this is how much work that must be done by the electric field on our molecule to rotate that molecule by 60 degrees from its equilibrium position.